my panelist is telling me what I need to do, for those of you who aren't here. I'm going to ignore him for now. I'm not. Not for now. My name is Patty Green. We are uh, my, I'm the moderator for this hour. My um, panelist is Ken Rattusi, my good friend Ken. Uh, this is the 43rd Call Lab Convention. It is March 21st. We are at the Sheridan Norfolk Waterside Hotel in Norfolk, Virginia. And the theme of our presentation is Agent of the Ring, and we're going to be talking about how to MC. Again, my name is Patty Green. I'm the moderator, and Ken is the panelist. <clears throat> um, first, how many of you have ever had to MC? Oh, well, okay. Um, thank you for coming. Um, if, you <laughs> if you'd like to go have a nap. No, I'm kidding. Um, so we were kind of laughing about emceeing because there's really, it, there's really not a whole lot of different information that you can say about emceeing. But um, we do do some things that are different um, at times from regular get up and let's be the Toastmaster MC. So some of the types of events that we may be called to do, these are just for examples, are, you know, um, the big one is if you're asked to MC for a national convention or your local state convention or a regional convention, if you might be, have to MC an hour. Um, you might have to MC a, like, a banquet for here. You know, every year we have two banquets and there's a person who MCs. Um, there may be things like that in your area or... You know, there are opening ceremonies, you know, uh, at, I'm thinking national, but a lot of other events may have an opening ceremonies. Um, it may be a special fundraising event where a bunch of um, clubs or callers or cures or dancers or get together. Um, I'm thinking uh, in our, I'm from North Carolina. In our area, we have a lot of hospice dances, and they tend to be, um, Fancy coloramas that have a purpose. Um, a a colorama, if you're at a square dance weekend and they have a colorama before the regular dance, you may be asked to MC. It is an MC job, the colorama. Uh, a banquet, um, a special event honoring a particular person. Uh, you know, if a club's having a anniversary, you know, like a big anniversary dance. Um, I was recently, uh, last year, I was asked to be the MC for a caller who was retiring in our area, you know, and it was kind of my job to be the ringleader and make sure that everything happened that was supposed to happen. So there are some very specific, uh, unique to our industry, things that we may be called upon to do. Um, big picture, the main responsibility, if you're asked to be a master of ceremonies, is to keep the event flowing. You need to keep the energy and enthusiasm of the audience high. Um, make whoever is there feel welcome. Um, make the, help make the speakers, in our case the callers, but they could be speakers, feel welcome. Make them feel, everybody feel appreciated. Um, smooth over problems because something always happens. Uh, you need to keep the event on time. You know, I think especially if you're doing a convention, you know, you're a convention hour and, you know, people are programmed and bing, 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 and your job uh, basically is to be cranky in a nice way. Uh, well, that, that's how I approach it. I mean, I often get asked to MC because they know that I will be charming, but if you're not there, I'm not going to wait for you. And if you're up in two people, I'm going to tell you, you need to be ready and by the stage. And if you're loitering and you're not, I know you're not ready and you're next, I'm going to go over and I'm going to say, get ready. You need to be ready to go up. You know, so I'm not afraid to do that because part of the job in our situation for those things, we have to keep things going because if I wait five minutes for somebody to be ready, somebody at the tail end of my hour or the tail end of my event loses their spot. You know, if I let you, if he gets up and he's calling and he's doing a 15-minute patter, that's time taken away from somebody else who, who's done the exact same as him. Um, you, you know, basically, you have to do whatever you need to to make the organization, to make the thing, oh, he's looking for a handout, make it be a success. 
Um, I, you're you're the you're you're the ringleader. Um, you need to kind of touch base with whoever's organizing. I know um, if I'm responsible for one of our fundraiser dances, and there I know there are special things going on. Uh, if I have to program, because sometimes in our case, you know, the MC also programs these fun dances. If I have to, um, sorry, I. He's coming in to take a picture, and I have to get a like a I have to get like a cruise ship wedding picture thing. I'll just I'll, but I will keep talking. If it's your response, if it's your responsibility, if it's your responsibility to program, also, don't over program the event. Uh, how if you've got to do a cake lo- cake walk, you know, a cake walk is not a minute. You know, it's going to take a good five minutes to do a cake walk. If we have presentations, if he if he's the person who's got to come up and do some presentation make sure you schedule the time in you can always add more dancing at the very end but you can't squeeze in things that have to happen um the uh, one last thing i'll say we, we're going to kind of go back and forth the one last thing i'll say is be yourself you were selected to do whatever the job is sometimes it's because nobody else would do it but because of who you are so you have to figure out a way to be yourself without being artificial because you really do set the tone for the event. I, a couple years ago, I was asked to MC one of these banquets. I know everybody. I was petrified because I'm up in front of my peers and I remember I went round and round. Everybody's got a shtick. Everybody's what's my oh? What am I gonna do? I gotta have a joke. Oh, like you know. And then I realized I don't. I just have to be myself. So I spoke in Japanese because we have Japanese. I think I spoke in French or German or something. I completely messed it up, but it's who I am. I was trying to make people you know feel welcome, and I stayed true to who I was. And people sense that you're genuine if you stay true to who you are. If you're not a comedian, as a general rule, don't tell jokes. It's just not going to work. If if you're just not gracious and you don't like to speak, you know, you can't speak off the top of your head, just go by the script. Be who you are and you will draw people in automatically. Yeah, um, I want to pick up on something that um, Patty had said. How many might remember back in the, uh, I'd say the 70s and 80s when um, the Nationals were really large? You know, you may be, you're talking 25, 30,000 people. And um, they used to have stage monitors, sound engineers, or sound monitors, and the MC. And I remember callers by uh, literally calling with, of course, we're using records. <laughs> and the MC reaches over in the middle of the tent. And pulls the needle off the record and tells them to get off because they've gone too far. And of course, you know, you can imagine what the caller is thinking, but um, like keeping on time, I've seen that more than once. Years ago, they used to do that. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I says, I don't want that to happen to me. But because um, I put something down here on the responsibility on the handout, it says, you're the CEO, you might have to make a decision, and it's probably not going to be popular. Uh, how many have had the MC where they might have had to cut a caller short? Any shorter hands? Right. It's not fun, is it? Um, because then the program is behind, and then you have to make a time decision. And many times what happens is if, if I happen to be an MC for an hour, I'll just cut my time. I'll just do a singing call. I'll forget the patter. And I'll say, hey, uh, hey gang, we're going to just keep the program on schedule, especially if you have rounds in between. You know, it's not fair to the round dance cure that they have to give up a round because the, some caller went over, you know, over their time. And there are some callers who, unfortunately, you know, do it. Not say, I'm not going to say they do it on purpose, they do it, and like they just they just keep going and keep going, and sometimes you got to sort of take them aside and hit them up on that. But I did have a handout. Did put a few things together. I broke it into two sections. One's becoming the master. You know, if you're going to be an MC, dress for success. Um, nowadays, with the dress styles getting, you know, especially even at the nationals, you know, the dress styles are getting a little bit less and less. I think still, if you're going to be an MC. 
um, you need to dress. At least, I'm not saying dress to the nines of all the square dancing, but dress appropriately, you know. Um, I think being an MC is good exposure. Having uh, just scheduled the national in Springfield, um, I had to reach out to some callers who had said that they would not be the MC because I didn't have enough MCs. Nowadays, it didn't be, it's not popular to be the MC anymore. I know, but a lot of callers say, I don't want to MC. Don't put me down for MC. Well, because it ties them to the hall for an hour, and they may not want to be tied to the hall for an hour. They might want to do their tip and then leave. But fortunately, many did. But I actually just made people MCs that I knew, friends. And I'd say, oh, by the way, you're the MC. Oh, I didn't want I always said, be quiet. I said, you're the MC. And I would put people in MC spots that were relatively newer callers that needed exposure. I think it's great exposure, don't you? Mm -hmm. They get a chance to get up there. They introduce themselves. They get introduced. Then they introduce themselves, and they get to introduce all the callers, and they get to square the, you know, take the microphone from the caller and, and then maybe introduce the cure. But the point is they're up on the stage, and they're giving themselves good exposure. Becoming so, comfortable with being on the stage without calling, too. Exactly. And then they can just step aside, let the caller call, and then they come back on stage. Hey, how about a big hand for Barry or for Jim or someone who done a great job? And it sort of eases them into it. So if you ever get asked to MC, um, do it. it. It should be a lot of fun. I am seated at the National this year. Um, for one of the halls dress rehearsal for the bigger events. Like I'm sure when Patty was the MC at the caller lab convention a few years ago, maybe she practiced a few things at home. Maybe she went through with a script. I know if I ever MC for a caller lab uh, banquet, I'm going to go through the script. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I, I understand I can do the pronunciations of names um, and rehearse because once you get up there, it's sort of pretty tough to wing it. So a lot of people looking at you. And by the way, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Perfect notes for a perfect event. Write down some notes. Make some notes. Anyone ever been to a, a square dance event and they see the MC with notes in their hands? I have because they, they don't want to make sure they, they don't want to miss anything, do they? Uh, name pronunciation, uh, titles, you know, who, who's this person? What are they doing here? You know, what's their responsibility? Maybe they can't remember it all, so make some notes. Be prepared. And there's no shame in having a piece of paper with the order of, in fact, if you don't have it, shame on you, with the order of events and what's supposed to happen. And Right, exactly, because if, if, the, if the announcing of Ken Rattusi has to be at 9.05 because for whatever reason, you need to have that written down and you need to be aware of the time. Because at 9.05, you better be introducing, I can't, what was I supposed, oh, what was I supposed to do at 9.05? Oh, okay, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, all right, just get up there. Um, the show must go on. I mean, if, if things are going to happen, how many have emceed and things have gone wrong and <laughs> somebody didn't show or whatever? The equipment fails. Equipment fails. I mean, the show's got to go on. You've got to be prepared to be able to handle these things. And... Um, I said, it's all about the delivery. Uh, Patty mentioned something I made a note about being yourself. You know, you're, you are you. You are not anyone else, so be yourself. If you're not a jokester, like she said, don't, don't start telling jokes. But, um, but it's about your delivery as well. Your delivery is really going to come from your personality. And then the responsibility. Case of an emergency. Somebody falls. We're talking square dancing now. Somebody falls. Somebody slips on the floor. Uh, something happens. The, all of a sudden, uh, the music stops, or a speaker blows, or something. You have to be able to handle that to the best that you can, um, because emergencies will happen. Um, I said, I wrote something here, share the fun, share the wealth. Have fun doing it, but also show them that you're having fun. You know, don't get up there grudgingly, like, because, you know, you're, you're stuck in the hall for an hour, you got to do a, an MC. I mean, to be able to MC and introduce people and run the show should be a fun thing. It's responsibility, but it should be fun. I did talk about you're the CEO, and you have to make a decision. I'm sure it wasn't easy for those MCs years ago to literally walk up on stage and pull the needle off a record and tell the caller, you're done. But, you know, back then... 
I think we were given like 10 minute spots. In some cases we still are, but when you're talking about 30,000 dancers and all these halls having like hundreds of dancers, huge halls packed, you got to keep it on schedule. And there's think about if there was 30,000 dancers, there was probably, I don't know, five, six, 700 callers, 800 callers. I mean, it was just enough to schedule what I had like 230, but to have 600 callers, back then is that's and then we didn't have computers we didn't have barry johnson's wonderful computer program which it is it made my job a lot easier but everything had to be done manually so think about that uh mastering the right ceremony know what you're doing i mean not all masters of ceremonies ceremonies are the same you know if it's just a small local sunday afternoon caller caller association dance or something that's one thing but if it's a big event or it's the new england convention or the national or wherever you're doing it you know you have to you have to fit your style appropriately know your audience you know who you know who know your audience it's really important uh know who you're talking to uh depending who's out there and uh, keep it clean i mean that's just be common sense but I have seen callers uh, who have emceed and have shot themselves in the foot because they can't keep it clean. I'm not saying that they were way off base, but, you know, there, there's some things just left not said. And um, you just keep it clean because, you know, you're supposed to be a professional. Would you do it again? Did you have fun? Okay. How did it end up? Was it successful? Um, you know, emceeing sounds easy, but it, it depends. depends who you're emceeing and how you're emceeing. And um, how many have emceed more than five times? Okay. And it was a lot of fun in some ways. Now, we do have a wireless mic up here, so please, if you decide you have comments or questions, we will welcome that. Penny? I just have a couple of, couple more things, and then we'll um, take some questions. Um, we already talked about, talked about preparation. Um, it is critical that even if you just get the schedule of the call, you know, at the Nationals, um, a part of the preparation, like he said, is, you know, what's somebody's name pronunciation? If there are requirements, um, nationals is the only thing I can think of that has really stringent requirements, not stringent, but, you know, you're supposed to say, they're supposed to give you a card that says their name and where they're from, which is helpful because even though I know you, like I know Ken, but in the heat, honestly, in the heat of the moment, you will forget somebody's name. I have forgotten Steve's name in the heat of the moment. And, I mean, you'll forget where they're from. There is no shame in having notes. Um, the, the big thing that I think is remember that you are not the star of the show. You are a facilitator. You have to let your, pre your personality come through. You want to be memorable in a good way. But at the end of the day, you are a facilitator. The stars of the show are the callers that you're introducing who hopefully will do a good job. Uh, but same token, you know, if you think of um, award shows t on TV, the people who are emceeing are not the stars of the show, but you remember them. You remember if they did a good job. You remember if they were respectful you, rem you remember if they had enough humor that people weren't groaning, but it made people comfortable, especially if something goes wrong. Um, you know, it, it needles. You know, somebody puts on the wrong record. You got the wrong song. W w things happen, and everybody gets so uptight. But if you kind of handle it with a little bit of not like over-the-top humor, but if you kind of gloss it over with a little bit of humor – we're all human, and we'll, we'll laugh. I, I remember I wasn't emceeing, but at the Nationals, I did um, Rolling in the Deep with the band. And, you know, hundreds of people on the floor because it's the band hall. And the, ba we were so, the band was so excited that they got the mark, and I had turned around to watch them because it was, it was when they first started doing it. So we were all so excited, and I turned around, and I started singing. And... I'm so, oh, we, oh, we got the introduction, and nobody's moving. I forgot to say circle left. 
And instead of, I know people who, if that happened, they would get, I laughed and I'm like, oh, circle left. And the dancers laughed and we went on with our business and, you know, it, it, right. And it's the same with emceeing. Things happen. You mispronounce a name. You don't have to be mean about it, but, you, uh, you know, you can make a joke of it. And, you know, sometimes you can't use humor if you really, sure. if you really know that you're going to butcher William Sikowich, you're going to butcher the name. You can always say, here's Jake or, you know, and, but get the right pronunciation. Um, don't lose your cool. Yeah. Seriously. It, you know, don't lose your cool because, you know, you're. You're sort of like the snow plow on the street. You're plowing the way for the success of the people coming after yeah. you. So you're clearing the path. And if you, for some reason, get flustered, you know, you're the leader of the hour, a leader of the event. And if you get flustered, well, people might look up to you and say, well, what do we do now? And so you got to try to keep your cool, keep your composure. And also, you know, when you're calling uh, at an event, Somebody might not show, and it's like, what is the responsibility of an MC? I know at the national, the responsibility would be that the MC takes that person's spot, unless they find somebody. But normally, they take that person's spot because um, that's some of the duties of the MC, and they usually have the last spot of the hour, usually, or the the first spot of the hour, and then they they introduce. But uh, they may have to just jump in there at the last second. So be prepared. If you're the MC in an event, have your have your music, have your microphone up on stage just in case you don't know. If you have to jump in at the last second, you're prepared. Um, make sure if there are um, things that have to happen during the night, cakewalk, banner retrieval. This is the, it's more on the local level where these type of things happen because the national level it's really a lot more scripted. Um, Maybe they want to sing the national anthem. You're doing the opening ceremonies for something. Make sure that you have music ready and available. Um, when I MC an event that involves things, my computer is never turned off, and it is always up on the st- – it's not smack dab in front of you know where all the callers would be putting their stuff in. But my computer is always on stage. It is plugged in. It is ready to go. It is queued up. I have a, a, a I use Square View, and I have a playlist of appropriate march, cake walk, bur- you know. Well, I don't. I'll I'll do a acapella happy birthday. But I have a list of appropriate music. So if something, if a, if you came up to me and you said, "Oh, we got to do a cake walk next tip," I'm ready. I don't have to open my computer. It's there. I can plug it in. It's, it's my job. I can just hit. I can hit play. I got a piece of music, and then I can figure out, oh, well, okay, well, the cake walks in. Well, let's see how we can adjust this. Um, it's really not rocket science. But conversely, you know, not everybody should MC. I know some people that do a horrible job MCing. Um, they, they forget that they have a job to do. Uh, they are not, you know, when I'm in charge and I'm emceeing, Steve knows I'm probably not going to leave the stage. He knows he's free to dance with whoever he wants. Cause if you're emceeing, that's your responsibility. Now it's okay to dance, but you better make sure that your partner is in the, f- at the square as close to where you need to jump out to get up and you better make sure that when everybody's saying thank you or the when the last swing your partner promenade home is going on that you get out of that square and you grab your microphone and you're ready to say how about a big round of applause here's the next person so it's okay to participate in the event but you got to be hyper aware of what's going on and to that end make sure you thank people i at the nationals, mostly in the band hall, I'm always amazed at how an MC goes through an entire hour without taking two seconds to thank the band. You know what I mean? Without taking two seconds to thank the sponsoring organization. You know, without thank yous are quick and easy, and they go a long way. And you'd be surprised. You did a hey, how about it? Come on, how about a big round of applause for Ken? Didn't he do a great job? He may have 
you know, sucked wind and never got his corner. But your job is to say, big round of applause. That's right. Did a great job. Uh, no matter what performance happens, yep. you you got to get up there and they have to leave on a high note. And dancers will applaud. And, you know, it's important because let's just say the caller had a bad tip for whatever reason. Maybe they're a newer caller. They got flustered. Maybe it's their first event, the first festival, whatever it is. And newer callers tend to be more nervous. So they might make some mistakes. But, you know, in the end, the last thing they're going to remember is when they're packing up and the MC comes up and says, how about a big hand for Patty? She did a great job. Give her a big hand. And everyone's going to applaud. You know what? We don't know what's going through their minds, but, you know, it, you get catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar. So you have to take those things into consideration. I've seen MCs be, like, at the back of the hall, and the tip ends, and the caller just packs up and leaves. And then by the they, none, none of this coming up, how about a big hand for Patty? She did a great job. They're gone. You know, the MC's way in the back of the hall, and then it's time. Then they finally, you know, come back on stage, and another caller comes up. And they didn't have closure. You know, when you're emceeing, you have an opening and a closure. The opening is you introduce the caller, and the closure is you say, you know, let's give a round, uh, a warm round of applause for the, you know, for Patty again, who just finished the tip. Thank you. Yes, yeah, because you have to bring closure to it, so the next cure uh, caller comes up. And speaking of queuing, what if there is a cure coming up in between? I have seen at many nationals sometimes cures might change. Um, within the hour. They may not do a whole hour. They may not be in sync with the calling schedule. So a cure might do the first 30 minutes of your hour, and then a new cure comes in. I've seen MCs not even introduce the cure, and the cure just gets up there and starts queuing rounds, and I think that's wrong. Okay, so there are, it doesn't matter. The MC is the MC of the hour, and they are responsible. And any cure that gets up there should be acknowledged um, for the time that they're going to be there. And um, so these are things you got to be aware of. But please stay close to the stage um, because when it's over with, you got to jump up there and you have to do the closure. The, the other thing to be aware of, which we have not talked about, is um, know the equipment. Um, you know, these days, people, you don't see very many records, but you see a lot of other things having to be plugged into other things. So... Whenever I'm in an unfamiliar situation, I always make sure I always, not when the event is starting, but when everybody's arriving, because it's my job, I will always make sure I go up on the stage, get my microphone plugged in. If I'm responsible for the first tip or I know I need to have extra music, make sure my computer's ready. I look at what equipment is being used. I make sure that there's a place for somebody to plug their microphone in efficiently. I make sure that there's a cable or at least I know where, if he comes up with it, where I have to plug it in. Um, I will personally, if somebody's got a computer, for example, and if you're splitting a tip, so somebody's doing a singing call and somebody's doing a patter, I may actually take the person's computer up with me when I introduce the patter person and get it ready, or I will take it from them and say, okay, you know, because you got – you're, you got to get them up there and get plugged in, and I will help them get their equipment set up. You know, if you let somebody come up and they've got their microphone and they've got their computer and, okay, they're untangling their microphone cord and they're looking for where to plug it in, and now they open up their computer and now they, you know, they plug it in and they're looking for it. That's, a, that's basically somebody's spot. And now they've got a minute to do their patter. So oh, be aware, if, if you have a question, if it's unfamiliar to do to you, ask so that you know. Know where the volume control is because your job is also to make sure if, if somebody gets on and they're way loud or they're way soft, it's your responsibility to slip nicely and subtly behind them and help them. That's important. Um, how many, I have a question. Years ago, we didn't really learn this thing, but um, at caller school, we do spend some time uh, talking about master of ceremonies. I have something in writing in the back of my syllabus on it, but um, the good exp how many here was never really taught to be an MC? How many just sort of winged it? You just sort of got up there. No one really told you what to do. Yeah, the first time. How many were ever actually 
taught or at least spoken to about the duties of an MC. Anyone? Good for you. Good for you. Because lots of times it's a position where people just say, okay, well, we need bodies to fill in for MCs. And you just get up there and just introduce next caller or whatever. But there's a lot more to it. And the one thing we do at, at the school is, um, and Patty knows this, and some of you know you've been to my school, is we have a dance every night, and we have um, we split the dance into two halves. And I pick two students each night to be the MC. And it's their job to collect the information on the callers that are calling within the tip numbers of their evening, like one through, one through five, six through ten. It's their duty to find out the information on the students and to keep the program running. And there's there, I normally have, like, if Patty was the first MC and I was the second, I would be calling within the first five tips. So she would introduce me, and then later on um, she would be calling in the later half of the program, and I would introduce her. But it gives the students, um, caller students, a chance to MC and keep the program on. And they really do a nice job. They take it serious because I, I go up there – at the beginning of the evening, and I will introduce the first MC, and I'll say, okay, I'd like to introduce the first MC, Patty Green, give her a big hand, and then she takes it from there. I don't go back on stage the rest of the night until the end when I say, how about a big hand for our MCs tonight? It is a dance. I don't feel it's my responsibility as the owner of the school to go up there and stand behind them. I give them the responsibility to do what they do, and you know what? They do it, and they like it. Some of them will say to me, um, can I MC again this year? That was fun. And uh, very early, I've had anyone say I don't really want to MC. Um, so it's a big responsibility, and I, I show them, I show them my confidence by not going up there saying. Now, once in a while, I might say, "Hey, we may need to cut the break a little bit short because maybe we're sort of running behind." And it's not their fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just that I might have gotten up there and done some. Uh, introductions or given an award out, so I might have pushed the, the time back. Yeah, but you know that would be that would be on me, not on them. Uh, is it, anyone have any stories or any experience with MC? Ronald? Questions? We have a yeah. mic. Sure. Well, it, yeah. Speaking of um, um, getting up and you know going long and you speak, the other thing I'll say is it is not your job to be up there and talk for five hours. You need to be politely concise. If you're introducing somebody, you don't tell a life story in five hours of how you know them. Everybody understands. You introduce them, get out of the way. Unless you're booked in to have comments. That's different. Uh, Chuck Jaworski from Chicago. I have two questions and one observation. A question first. What's a colorama? A colorama is a period of time before a regular dance uh, that anybody there can call. So, for example, in North Carolina, for federation dances, for uh, I'm putting on a weekend in a in a, a month and a half. It's staffed by staff callers. So, from you know 6:30 to 7:30, we're going to have a callerama, and that means that any caller who's present, I don't, we don't care who you are or how good you are, you can put your name on a list to get up and call and do a singing call, open mic. Um. I remember in the early days of Illinois convention, not only did they control what period going over time, but they installed traffic lights oh my. in every hall. What a great idea. Well, all the callers didn't like it. And the question I have, and this, this had just happened to me Tuesday, what do you do when something seriously ha hampers a dancer, either dies on the floor or gets seriously hurt? How do you handle that? Um, well, that's a good point. Um, if you're the, you mean if you're just the caller, or if you're the master of ceremony? Well, let's say a master of ceremony. All right. Well, you know, it, I've had personally, I've had one dancer in my 40 years die right in front of me on the stage on the floor. I've only had one. I I know a caller in Vermont. He says he's had 11. I've Don't go that but I've only had one. And as the master of ceremonies, I mean, that's a very serious issue. I I would think um, that you have to basically shut down the activity as, as, you know, and you have to maybe get the dancers off the floor. You may have to stop the program. The program might just be stopped for the whole evening. You don't know. I mean, that's just a big downer. Um, now, it depends. Somebody might have fallen and maybe uh, – 
they're they're still okay, but we don't know their condition, and their the ambulance comes and takes them away. But it, if somebody clearly isn't getting up or being revived with paramedics, and this is the case with me, I just happened to be on lessons night. I was not an MC. Um, this person, um, we had doctors who were members of the club and nurses, and mm-hmm. one doctor, one dancer said to me, he goes. I knew as soon as he went down, I said, that was it. He was, he was gone. So of course that ended the evening It most likely ends the evening, but the MC's responsibility would be to clear the hall, get everybody away and let the, let the uh, paramedics or MC, you know, the uh, emergency people do what they have to do and then confer with the officials of the dance yes, or the convention. You got to talk to them and say, look, it's your call. I'm the MC. Uh, you know, what do you want to do? I think I probably had four or five dancers dancing on the floor. Um, and then others, maybe 10 that had been injured, like last Tuesday. Uh, the question I have about, um, about my memory is going on me. Um, how do you, what do you do? Um, who makes the decision on the dance should, should be canceled? Oh, you well, oh, on, what, on what happens? Yeah, I mean, what no. Ha- there was 10 squares on the floor, and all of a sudden, uh, this guy went down Tuesday. And we knew right away from me watching him that he had gone into a, a you know, he was not there. Yep. And I'm not surprised when he went down. But we went out to the hall, went down to the office, and the partners were brought in the paramedics. Yep. But then it, it was all cleared up. How do you decide, you know, if we should dance here? Do we, we, we have three hours to go, or right. we got so, one tip to go? You know? So that's a... Uh... That's kind of a tough question because you don't want to be insensitive, but you also don't want to be um, knee-jerk. Uh, I don't want – drama's not the right – fatalistic. So my suggestion would be if if you're the MC and it happens, you know, the caller – the, we do not teach anymore. Mm-hmm. Make a circle, raise your hands, everybody keep dancing – I had a lady go down at a dance in Virginia a, a month and a half ago. She slipped. And in my, I had that oh, first tip. Mm-hmm. I, I could see that she was taking, being taken care of. I kept call. I didn't do a whole long, massive tip. I was, think I was in the middle of the singing call. I finished the tip. I made sure I went down to check on her without being at theatric. I just went down to make because <laughs> make sure she was okay, and we made the decision we were going to keep dancing because she was okay. Now, in the case of a death or a serious bring the ambulance injury, mm-hmm. you I would probably go to the organizer and mm-hmm. just say, "Okay, how would you like to handle this?" And then I, as an MC, I would probably get on the mic and I would probably say. Because not everybody's aware of what happens at a dance. Mm-hmm. There were some people that didn't know this woman went down. Yeah. There are some people that probably wouldn't even see an ambulance come in if it if it drove onto the floor. <laughs> so I would get up. I would imme- you know get up when it was when you, I kind of knew it was going on. I would get up on the microphone. We, you know, we got an hour and a half left to the dance, and I would probably say, uh, "Just so you know, here's what happened. No big long story. Uh, Ken had a fall." Uh, it looks like he had a seizure. Um, the EMTs have taken him away. They're, he's getting really good help. You know, he's gone. You know, what What would you like to do? We can continue dancing. It, it, it may be difficult, but you're here. And if you'd like to continue dancing, we are happy to continue dancing. But if you'd like to call it an evening, you know, we will call it an evening out of respect. And then what happens is you're, A, letting people know so nobody starts doing this. Everybody knows what's going on, and then the whole group can kind of make a decision unless, for example, in the case of a death, Mm -hmm. you know, the organizer, the club may say, you know, we are just – we can't do it, in which case I would probably say as the MC, I would say let's do one singing call. We'll call it a night. I would make sure that I picked a gospel song or a song about friendship or something appropriate, right? And send them on their way, so it's not such an abrupt. Yeah, I think that sometimes the organizers or the officers of the club don't know what to do, right. and that's when the caller has to come in and take charge. I would tell you the worst we, well, I ever had involved with. We went to a caller's school with about twenty callers on Sunday, 
And the third tip, the man was a caller from South Carolina. He danced with my girlfriend, and he died. Now, what do you do for the whole week? So we had a religious ceremony the next day, and the whole group talked about it, and the callers voted to continue. So it's tough. It's not always easy. No, that, and that's a different situation because that's sort of like a closed event where the people are going to be meeting the same people. But in a public event, I'll tell you, if it's a death and it's a, and it's it's known that it's a death, I mean, there's, there's no, no doubt about it. Um, and it's especially if it's later in the evening, I mean, that's to me, it's a no-brainer. We're done. That's it. When, when that happened to me in Vermont uh, on that night, it was lessons I still remember to this day. It was probably a little past middle of the night. There was no question. I mean, by the and it was in a small town, so first they had first response. So they didn't have an ambulance. First response came, and then they had to call an ambulance. And by the time the ambulance got there, and then worked on them, and so I mean, I mean, I just quietly went up on stage, packed up, and um, we ended the evening. There was no doubt about it. Now, if it happens on the first tip and somebody goes down and they're carted, I've had this where they've actually been carted out. Maybe they broke their leg or something and they go to an ambulance. We'll continue the dance for the most part because, you know, okay, they slipped, they fell, they might have broken their ankle. Maybe their spouse will, their elbow, you know, maybe they tried the roller skate and went broke their elbow. And, um, right out for the the girls' roller derby. Yes, that didn't work either. But, but if, if they, uh, Lots of times their partner will just say, we're going to just take them to the emergency room uh, to have the elbow checked out or have, you know, have her ankle checked out. Or, you know, I've had dancers do that and come back and dance the last tip. So you don't know. But uh, to keep it the master of ceremonies, it's a tough call, Chuck. You just don't know. it. A lot of it depends on when it happens during the, the event, event and what type of event it is. Comments, questions, we welcome this. It's good stuff. We have some good leaders in the room. You must have some experience or stories you can tell us. Susan Snyder, I think it's important when you're the MC to know who off the floor is in charge. <clears throat> I have so many people come up, oh, we need you to announce this, and I need you to announce that. And you don't want to spend your time up there making announcements. People want to dance. So there should be somebody who... Uh, that's the person who's going to tell me what needs to be done, not have 10 people running up and telling me things to do. Rich Tobin, Massachusetts. Um, I was in Toastmasters before, and um, uh, that's the only experience I've had with uh, with MCs. But um, I do know that uh, we spoke at the time about when somebody goes down, what the protocol, what at least some of the basic protocols are, of uh, of handling the uh, uh, the situation. Uh, if you have, if you are certified in something, you go so far. If you're not certified, you you, you look for somebody that is uh, something of that nature. Maybe you can comment on that. I don't know. Well, as an as a um, as an MC. Um, you know, one of the things on your checklist probably should be, who would you call if something should happen? Um, because as an MC, you're supposed to be aware of what's going on on the dance floor. <laughs> We're not sometimes. Um, I certainly, me personally, I would probably make sure, even though it may look like I'm not paying attention to what's going on, I would make sure that the person was attended to, but you can make darn sure that I know what's going on. I may not look like it. I know what's going on. And I, I always have my phone, if I'm, especially given the age of our dancers. I know how to dial 911. Even if it's a false alarm, you know, I'm going to make a split-second decision. And if 911 gets five calls to come to our dance hall, that's better than having nobody because, you know, it's the old passive – Oh, no, what are we going to do? You know, um, I, I can't answer if you're experienced or what. You know, I, you, know uh, you can certainly, is there a nurse? And, you know, the old is the doctor in the house, um, which you could do. Um, but I, you know, these days I would probably call 911 if there was real serious need of medical attention um, because I don't, I don't want the responsibility of making a medical decision when I'm not. I'm sorry, I just had to ask you. Yeah. 
No. I, I'm sorry. I, I just had to ask because it's been so long for me uh, that I, I need to try to refresh some of the. Yeah, if that, ha I think uh, Chuck in the back, if you can give him the mic. Yeah, if that happens, you know, many times there are nurses or doctors or somebody that's uh, a P, you know EMT, um, paramedic that might be in the dance floor, and I've never been in a, in a situation where somebody hasn't come forward just to quickly check mm -hmm. on them. You know, I'm a paramedic. Let me look at this or something. They try to help. So people try to do what's right. Yes. Um, uh, as MC, um, if it's a large crowd or someplace you call on a weekly basis, walk them through the call for help. Where you all join hands and raise your hands. And I kind of make a joke out of, you know, we're going to do this and that. And both, uh, Joe's going to fall down and break a leg, you know, so they're not going to work it out. And we do that. Every so often, every three or four weeks, a group of workers on a normal basis, that's a good thing to do, too. Yeah, you should. Uh, and I've known clubs who make copies of that sheet, you know, with the hands up, and they hand it out. They give it to their new graduates. Uh, they educate their club members. You know, we don't really talk about it, but some clubs are really more active about it than others. Comments, questions, good stuff. Right there, Tom. Tom Money, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've had the pleasure of a number of years, I said pleasure, of programming for our state convention. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, it might be easy to dismiss the need for an MC as your groups sometimes get smaller or attendance at certain functions are smaller. But we had three key areas. We'd gone several years, I think, without formally assigning MCs. But there were three areas um, I immediately went recruiting somebody to cover uh, these three areas, and one was a trailing dance, which occurred in our case, they call it early bird, on Thursday afternoon for two hours. And the key reason we needed somebody there to keep things not only moving, um, and especially moving on that day, is because, uh, as Patty mentioned earlier, this was an opportunity for some callers that weren't on the program, they could get up and do a tip or a singing call. And we had enough people, you needed, we only had two hours, we needed to keep things rolling. Well, then on Saturday night, they'd have a diehard dance, but the rules, the reason we needed somebody there was a little different. Um, it wasn't that we didn't have enough callers to fill the hour or whatever we had, hour and a half. We got notice from the hotel that at midnight, their nursing staff, medical staff, left the premises, and there was a liability issue. We could not have any dancing whatsoever, anything going past the midnight hour, mm -hmm. which previously we had gone later. But the things had changed over the years, and we had to be sure we cut it at midnight. Well, then Sunday morning, kind of a trail out dance, the situation was, yeah, people want to get on their way, so we want to stay on schedule, even though, and in some cases, we didn't have enough people to fill the hour and a half, so then either the MC had to do some work <laughs> with that, or you had to make sure you had some things scheduled ahead of time, some commitments from people that that hour and a half happened. So different reasons, but a very strong need for an MC there, even though we may have been low on attendance on certain years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if Chuck brought something up here because I'm sorry. I was, Who are I'm you? Becky Jorsky. <laughs> sorry, from Chicago. Um, but we have um, real small groups that we work with. And we work out of a senior center. Now, if you work at the senior, if you're a member of the senior center, you fill out a form. They have um, information on emergency contact. But what we just realized this past Tuesday, because we had a, a member um, that had a stroke, uh, I went to the office, and then they called the paramedics, and and they had all his information on there, which was really good. But then. I realized that there were some other members who, n who are not members of the senior center, and there's no contact information. We, we have to make sure that we have them fill out an emergency contact information. And that's where we're at right now. So if you have... Oh, oh with, the, with the dancers themselves? Yes. So that you have something on record for yes. your... That's a great idea. Uh, yes. I realized this after this happened, so I just want to bring this Dana. up. Dana? What? You just checking on us to make sure we're here? Okay. I know. We know. 
Okay, I'm Mike McIntyre from Winchester, Virginia. Um, just last week, I was MC at the Waska Festival for the opening ceremonies. And they have a committee that puts everything together on a form. So I know what's going to happen, 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 happen. And I realize that uh, I'm prepared in that way, but is the hall prepared? Okay, so I went an hour early, met with the color guard, in the process of founding that uh, the hotel did not have flags posted, which we're supposed to be in, that had to be taken care of. It was noticed on my sheet, we're supposed to have a certain amount of chairs on the stage and the podium, that was not there. And the equipment was there, but there was no microphones. Uh, so, you know, as a caller, of course, I had my own mic, so I was ready to plug in. So if you are going to be an MC at a particular large event. A big event. Big an important event, event. And so forth. Your prepare, preparation is not just what is handed to you, who you got to introduce and so forth. You have to make sure everything else is in order. Otherwise, you may not be able to do your job. Just having called Waska the last four years up until this year, I know that's a big job because that's the opening ceremonies and the and Waska Festival does a fantastic job, but they they have everything down to a wire that, you know, boom, 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 boom. you got to be bringing people on, color guard, national anthem, introductions. And then, of course, you got to wrap it up because then the dancing's got to start because the dancers are all there. So that's a big job. And that's a, and he's, he's absolutely right. You know, you check the hall and uh, things that there are not his responsibility but became his responsibility because what if he didn't? What if he just waltzed in at five minutes of? They might be scurrying around, and that's too big of an event to do that. Comments, questions, this is good before we wrap it up. Tom Money, Pennsylvania. A uh, question for Patty to comment on <laughs> since she's been in this position before. Uh, you had mentioned about having to do previously um, MC in a hair caller lab. Um, and I know sometimes that involves situations where somebody's either receiving an award or you have to have some details about the person you're commenting on. Um, let's say you don't know that person. What's the best way or how do you go about gathering in general information that you might need if you need background information on somebody? Uh, well, um, if you know enough in advance, you can certainly ask the person. You can go online. Um, you can ask somebody in their you know, it depends. Really depends on what the award is for. For example, I had to give Mr. Computer Geek, <laughs> our lovely Barry, an award. Now I know him, but I didn't know a whole lot about him, and so. I, but I knew it was gonna. I knew in advance because I had been tagged to do it, and I knew in advance. So I went online and I just looked him up, and I wasn't looking for. I wasn't looking for like a lot of detail, but I certainly want to know how to pronounce his name and where he's from and what he does for a living, because in this case it helped me to kind of, you know, with the background stuff. Um, you can ask the event organizer if there's anything in particular you would like that they need you to say about the person. So if, if it's a special, if you're emceeing the whole night, for example, and they've said, okay, we give out uh, regional, um, local awards to our callers and cures and dancers in our area. And to get the award, somebody has to nominate them. And when they nominate them, they have to write a biography. You know, why does this person deserve this award? So if you know that's part of your duties, you'll get that piece of paper because you can skim it and do like the opening paragraph and the closing paragraph. You know, you don't have to read 500 pages of information. But usually that's enough information for you to give enough information to say why the person's getting the award. But worse comes to worse, just ask them. And how difficult does this make it if it's something they're not supposed to know? I didn't know. She came up oh. <laughs> No, but it, but it, but it, but it's true. So if Barry's getting an award, and you know it, but he doesn't, and you you simply want to make sure you know where he's from, and like what he does for a living in his real you know his real life, um, maybe you want to find out if he's got kids. 
you know, you want to do something personal. Is it – okay, soapbox. Soapbox. We come to these events – and we spend so much time talking to everybody about how great a choreography w- choreographer we are. We never spend time fellowshipping and finding out about people. What do you like? What do you do? For, what do you do for a living? Not e- you know. And it can be as blunt as that. Hey, so what do you do when you're not calling? Well, you're making a personal connection. So in his case, I knew him. I made it a point before my time to. F- finagle a time when we could just have a normal, hi, my name is Patty conversation. And for me, I like to do that because it's who I am. But I just made sure I found a time to find out something about him, what he did, and then I had to remember it, you know, in, you know, make sure I got it right. And I, so I asked enough questions that I could remember. But that's one way to do, do a little sleuthing because at the end of the day, it's kind of funny because he really had no – he probably had – why is Patty talking to me? Why is she asking me these questions? Although, hey, it's nice somebody's not asking me about choreography. We're having a nor- – I told him a little about myself. He told me a little about himself. We made a connection, and then bam. <laughs> and, any other questions, comments? This is good stuff. Um, my final comments would be uh, turning up before I turn it over to uh, Patty is basically don't be afraid to be an MC. Volunteer for it. Um, it's good exposure and it's a good experience. And um, you never know what's going to happen, but take it take it serious. Be prepared. Be over prepared. Okay, and um, make sure the program runs white right, and I'm sure it will. <laughs> But um, being a master of ceremonies could be a lot of fun. It's a great experience. And not everybody can do it. You know, there's some – you've been to some events where the master of ceremonies is just outstanding, aren't they? I mean, it's almost like uh, the MC of the Academy Awards. You know, they're funny or they keep the program running. And um, so strive to be, you know, the best MC you can. Don't turn away from it, especially if you go to the larger events. The nationals are always looking for MCs. Believe me, the programmers and the future nationals are always looking for people to MC. And uh, so volunteer and take the time. And just be yourself. Be yourself. If there's one thing, I say this to new callers, I, I'll say this as to be an MC. Be yourself. If you are not funny, don't try to be funny. You've got to be personable. If you can't remember jokes... You can make a joke of it. Okay, I don't. I never tell good jokes, but you know, I was always taught that the first thing you should do is is tell a joke. So I'm going to tell a joke and then find a really bad joke. So people go, oh, but they think it's it, they think it's part of your shtick. But really, be yourself, and and it really is good exposure, because I'm telling you, you go to you watch award shows on TV. You may not remember all the people who made announcements, but you're going to remember the MC. Good, bad, or indifferent. We have another comment? Okay. One last. Sure, one more, Chuck. On our Tuesday afternoon Senior Citizen Club, they're allowed to come to the mic and tell a joke. Now, go back about a year. Elmer's wife passed away at that next week, and every week since, he brings a cake. But he also brings jokes, and his jokes were not very good. So Becky and I got together and bought him a book on jokes. And they went probably really well for a long time until he must have read the whole book. And now he starts these stories that are getting a little blue, you know what I mean? And so I have to read it and okay it or not. Well, the dancers love it because Becky and I are at the front of the hall trying to understand what Elmer's talking about and making faces, and all the dancers are on the outside looking at us, and they enjoy looking at us respond to the jokes that he tells. That's Elmer. Well, thank you very much for coming. Um, we are going to close up. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting the unplug high five from our director. Uh, banquet social hour starts at six o'clock doors open at six thirty. banquet at seven uh, it's cattle call seating so come early get a good seat and I hope you have a great night and enjoy the rest of your convention thanks for coming <laughs>